Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio podcast with Ahmed Saqqaimini and Ihsan Alexander. The Islamic Renaissance has begun. May the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon us all. My name is Ahmad and I am a physicist, a poet, and deeply committed to the reawakening of the human mind and heart through art, science, and spirituality. Ihsan is a spiritual coach committed to spiritual awakening within the Muslim community and beyond. He is the creator of several leading-edge coaching and online educational programs designed to cultivate greater awareness, spirituality, and success. You can learn more at his website, ihsanalexander.com. And you are listening to the Soul of Islam radio podcast. It is a weekly program dedicated to sharing the deeper dimension of Islam and supporting your personal growth and spiritual development. I am Ahmed, and I'm delighted to be here with my good friend and brother Ihsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio. This is Ihsan. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you throughout the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide and bless all of us and inshallah support us in the awakening within our ummah, the Islamic Renaissance, inshallah. Now, today's podcast is very close to the heart. In this episode, inshallah, we will discuss the spiritual fruits the importance and the essence of dhikr. It is a fundamental practice for those who seek nearness to the divine. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyid Muhammad a'udhu billahi minash shaytanu rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Dhikr in Islam this is one of the most important subjects that we could possibly be talking about. In Islam we have a very rich spiritual tradition. There are so many spiritual practices from fasting to salah, which we actually covered in the previous episode of Soul of Islam Radio, to charity, even to good character and conduct. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi even equated smiling to be a beneficial act of charity or an act of worship, treating others kindly. I mean, really, worship and ibadah in Islam is limitless. Everything can be considered ibadah and worship when done with the proper intention. And Allah Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, that he has created human beings and jinn purely for worship, that it is worship that gives our souls and our beings strength, gives us light, gives us sustenance, spiritual sustenance. In Islam, there is a unique form of worship or a meditative spiritual practice known as dhikr. And dhikr is mentioned in the Quran as well as in the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ more than any other spiritual practice. In this episode of Soul of Islam Radio, we will explore the meaning of dhikr, how to experience and practice dhikr, the benefits of dhikr, and really the effects of dhikr on the human being, on the human soul, on the psyche, and on consciousness. Dhikr is a fundamental tool. It is a fundamental practice for those who walk the path of cultivating awareness. It is a tool used by those who walk the path of selflessness. The human mind tries to attach itself to itself. And dhikr is a tool for the human mind to detach itself from itself and allows for an opening. It allows for a connection with what is real. So when implementing dhikr, the human mind can reach and attain awareness. It can cultivate awareness. It could find itself in the divine presence. Dhikr is such a fundamental tool that when we look at the root word for dhikr, we find that the root is made up of the three letters dal, kaf, and ra. And these three letters make up the word dhikr. In other words, the root word for dhikr is dhikr. And subhanAllah, this is very profound because it points towards the simplicity of the practice which in turn points towards the truth. Now, some of the meanings that are derived from the word dhikr are remembrance and the act of being reminded and the act of reminding oneself and others. Now, anytime that the human mind is in need to resort to dhikr, 
is a need to resort to remembrance or being reminded of something is when the human mind forgets. Subhanallah, insan, which is the word for human being, which is the singular form of anas, the human beings, embedded in that very word is forgetfulness. So it is in our nature to forget. Now, Allah Alam, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, forgetfulness could be a consequence of our descent onto this physical plane. But we cannot ignore the fact that we forget. And by using dhikr as a tool, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the human mind to realign itself with what is real, with what matters. And it does that by forcing the self to be present in the moment by invoking the attributes of the divine as well as other spiritual sayings. As Ahmed said, dhikr literally means to remember or to mention, to make mention of, to affirm, to remember. The word insan, it comes from the same root in Arabic meaning to forget, actually, and insan being human being. So the same root for the word human being in Arabic also means forgetful, by nature to forget. By nature, by virtue of the fact that we are born into this world, into this matrix, we forget where we came from and who we are. We are in a state of forgetfulness or unconsciousness, a state of ghafla in Arabic. Prior to incarnation in the physical world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that we were in the divine presence, souls created in the divine presence, and he posed a question to all of creation. Am I not your Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked all of the souls, am I not your Lord? And we then affirmed, Bala, yes, thou art our Lord, Allah Almighty. Yet we come into this world and we forget, we have forgotten who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr is the quintessential spiritual practice to help awaken consciousness again to remembering the Lord of heavens, the Lord of creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are various levels or states of consciousness, and we talk about this in some of our other work as well as in the Islamic Meditation Program and the Eternal Warrior Way Program. But to again briefly visit it, there are three states of consciousness, three fundamental states of consciousness, Nafs al-Amara, Nafs al and Nafs al Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. And each one is localized in a different area of the body. The first stage being localized in the gut and the hunger and the appetite and thirst and the physical needs and drives. The second in the mind and the head and the brain being driven by psychological needs and drives. The need for validation, the need for acceptance, the need for safety and security and so on. And the third stage, the third state of consciousness is what is nafs al localized in the heart and the soul. We have, in essence, forgotten who we are. And we come into this world and we begin to believe that we're the mind and the body, that we're the body-mind, that this physical form, this physical being, that is the vehicle for our soul, becomes equated with our totality, who we believe ourselves to be. We have literally forgotten who and what we are, where we came from and where we're going. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that verily, from Allah do you come into Allah, you are returning. The world, as we know it, and our culture, specifically the culture of materialism, which is not a culture of spirituality, would have us believe that we are this body and this mind. And hence, the overwhelming fear of death that pervades our culture. Death is the doorway to eternity. What actually dies? What gets left behind? The body will be left behind. The mind will be left behind. But the soul is divine. It's eternal. It continues. It persists. It's divine energy. It cannot be destroyed. Yet the fear of death originates from this identification with temporal form, with the body and with the mind, with a loss of self. Hence, one of the great early Sufis in the ninth century stated, they who know themselves or as they who know their lords, those who truly know who they are, who have transcended temporal form identity, 
and connected again with their divine eternal reality in the divine presence, those people have access to the divine presence. And also why the Prophet ﷺ continually emphasized the remembrance of death. To be mindful, to be aware of death. To always keep the angel of death as your companion so that you know you are here for a time. You were here only for a short time and you were a traveler in this world. This is not our home. So seek not to build upon it your home. The body-mind, although it must be honored, loved, and respected, is not our home. The body-mind is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the soul to incarnate to experience life in this plane, but it will be left behind at some point. And identification with the body and the mind is the cause of suffering. The holy practice of dhikr is designed and it's revealed to humanity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to awaken the human heart, to shift consciousness from the mind, from ego consciousness, and from the body to the heart, towards the soul. Dhikr is the practice that literally awakens the heart. Dhikr Allah specifically awakens and activates the human heart. Heart-based consciousness, level 3 state consciousness, leads us to the state of nafsul mutma'inna. The Prophet of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam, stated that all things develop rust, they develop atrophy, they develop decay, and all things have a polish. And the polish of the heart is dhikrullah. The polish of the heart is the Qur'an. And the purified heart can be likened to a pure, clear mirror that reflects the light of the divine into creation. Imagine a mirror that is dirty and dusty, full of mud. It reflects nothing. It reflects no light. But the clean mirror, the purified heart, then is reflecting the light of Allah. And those, the dhakirin, those who have truly remembered Allah and have truly purified their hearts in tazgiyah, in purification, in tazgiyah to nafs, jihad and nafs, tazgiyah, the purification of the self, their hearts that have become so clear, so pure, that they reflect nothing but the light, the love, the beauty, the mercy, the compassion, the peace, the strength, the fortitude, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr is the key. Of all the spiritual practices revealed to us, revealed to humanity, dhikr is the most fundamental and easy to practice and the most effective at awakening the human heart. SubhanAllah, dhikr, just like salat, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this divine gift, this tool, and dhikr is here to extinguish forgetfulness. It is here to sever any attachments from this physical world. It is here to sever any attachments from any illusions or delusions that the human mind finds itself in. When one introduces dhikr into their daily lives and their daily practices, one does so by invoking the names of Allah. And what is it that we're really doing when we're doing dhikr? We often invoke the attributes of Allah. And when we do so, we are reminding the human mind. We are trying to remember the attributes, the attributes of love, the attributes of compassion, mercy, knowledge, wisdom, peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran how one can reap the benefits of dhikr if the human mind is at the stage of belief. This is mentioned over and over in the Qur'an. But this doesn't mean that one at a stage of Islam cannot practice dhikr. Because at that stage, at the stage of Islam, the human mind makes a proclamation known as the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam. This proclamation is for the human mind, it is a choice for the human mind, a choice to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when one uses the tool of dhikr at this stage, it is helping his self, his mind to reach the stage of iman, the stage of belief. Now, at the stage of belief, the dhikr is used as a tool to cultivate First, it is used to reach the stage of belief, and from the stage of belief, it is used as a stage to cultivate awareness. And what is awareness but ihsan? 
Awareness is being constantly aware of the divine with every step, every action, everything that I'm doing in my life, whether it is at work or at school or my relationships with family and friends. And at that stage of Ihsan, at the stage of excellence and the stage of perfection, one cannot stop and say, I have arrived, but rather the tool of dhikr there helps the human mind to stay there and to cultivate more awareness and higher degrees of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see dhikr as a tool. It is a common thread that runs through all three stages. Now, this tool, dhikr, is not new. It's a very ancient tool. And we know that dhikr is used with the help of a mesbaha, or also known as dhikr beads. And the beads in the mesbaha, the dhikr beads, each bead really resembles a moment. You know, you sit there after you've done wudu, ablution, in a clean space to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of those beads represents a moment, a passing moment, a second, a period of time that is spent in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see this ancient tool of dhikr with the use of dhikr beads throughout other traditions. We see it amongst Buddhists, Hindus, and even Christians. In Christianity, they call it a rosary. So we see this practice of dhikr as something that can trace itself back to the origins of the way, the origins of the path. If anything, if this common thread between each practice and every religion, we should look at this common thread as an opportunity for us to to all unite under the roof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This tool of dhikr is pointing towards the human connection, the spiritual connection between us all. Because again, we find it in every tradition, the importance to remind the human mind of Allah, of God, of the divine, of reality. To constantly detach the human mind from what is illusory, of what is temporary, of what is physical. Many of us own a vehicle and spend at least a few hours a day driving. And if one is driving on a highway or a street and one is not aware of the lane that he is in with every passing moment, the driver will find himself steering to the left or to the right and Allah could find himself in a car accident. Dhikr is the same way. It forces the human mind to be aware of every passing moment so that it could realign with Allah, so it could realign with the truth, so it could realign with what matters. We are constantly reminding ourselves of the day that we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what we have done, with our actions. Dhikr is a broad term. It's actually a very general term. And there are different forms or different expressions of dhikr, ranging from the recitation of the Qur'an to making tasbih, like Ahmed was mentioning, on a mazbaha, as well as other forms of meditation. We actually go into these in much more detail in the Islamic meditation program. But generally, when we speak about dhikr, we tend to refer to the act of tasbih, the recitation or the chanting of specific phrases or of Asma al-Husna, the holy divine names and attributes of Allah Almighty. This type of dhikr, tasbih, can be done individually or collectively in jama'ah, and there are unique benefits to each. But in essence, again, dhikr means to remember Allah, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And real remembrance is not an act of just the mind, but it's an experience of the entire being. Real remembrance of Allah is mental, it's physical, and spiritual. It's the experience of dhikr with one's entire being. In tasbih, in this primary form of dhikr, we are chanting, we are calling upon Allah's names, we are reciting Allah's names, or specific phrases, such as la ilaha illallah. We are continually, on the one hand, affirming what is true, reprogramming our beings, our minds, to come into vibrational and harmonic resonance with truth, with the most fundamental truth, that there is no God but Allah, that there is nothing but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the only reality is Allah. We are also calling upon Allah Almighty. We are literally calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He Almighty says in the Quran, Call upon me, I will answer. These specific phrases have harmonic or vibrational or energetic properties, energetic power. They resonate at very specific 
frequencies. I mean, these sounds are very specific. They are they are eternal divine words of power that Allah Almighty has created that transcend the world of form. So when we make dhikr, we are literally connecting with something that transcends the world of form, the world of time and space. Through dhikr, we are retuning our beings to harmonize and to resonate with eternity, with that which transcends dunya, that which transcends the world. We are harmonizing with the Divine Presence. In the Divine Presence of Allah, everything is in dhikr. Countless multitudes of unseen beings and angels are continually making dhikr Allah throughout the heavens, throughout the universe, throughout the expanse of Allah Almighty's Divine Presence. In reality, everything exists by dhikr Allah. Everything exists, it manifests purely through the power of its affirmation or remembrance of Allah Almighty's supreme, absolute existence. Allah says everything in the creation is making dhikr. Every atom, every molecule, every particle is existing purely by the power of dhikr Allah. Everything has consciousness. And the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated this to the Sahaba when he held a rock in his hand and allowed them to hear the dhikr, the tasbih of even the rock, of even a stone. Hence, in Islam, it is required, it is important to treat everything and to continually walk with adab, with excellence and character and conduct in everything we do, to not even treat inanimate objects callously. The Prophet of Allah was so aware of the consciousness of all things, of even inanimate objects, that he would even name his belongings. He would even name the serving dish that he used, his sword, his cane, etc. So for the Muslim, for the believer, it's absolutely important to treat everything with reverence, everything with respect, because everything is in the Qur'an. Everything is a creation of Allah Almighty. Everything has consciousness from inanimate objects to life forms, to animals, to trees, to plants. We must realize that all of these things exist and are alive by the Qur'an. They are in surrender and in submission to Allah Almighty, and they must be honored and respected. In dhikr Allah, when we are chanting, when we are reciting these phrases, when we are calling upon Allah Almighty, we are generally using the tongue to call, to make these sounds, to recite Allah or La ilaha illallah. There is a direct connection between the tongue and the heart. And usually what is in the heart ends up being spoken on the tongue, and what is spoken on the tongue ends up being transferred into the heart. This is the power of affirmations, affirmations and truth. Once a man came to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu and said, Ya Rasulullah, the requirements of Islam are so many and I'm very weak. Give me one thing that I can keep that would be the most beneficial to me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told him, Keep your tongue moist with dhikrullah. Keep your tongue moist with dhikrullah. Don't leave dhikr. If you can keep to one thing, at least keep dhikr. It will keep your heart alive. He also, Sallallahu Alaihi said, the difference between those who make dhikr and those who do not is as the difference between the living and the dead. SubhanAllah. It is dhikr that awakens the heart, that shifts consciousness from the mind to the heart. It is dhikr that helps us to remember who we truly are and what we're connected to. And as I said earlier, dhikr is something that is generally often practiced individually as well as in jama'ah. And many shuyukh, many great teachers of Islam and Islamic spirituality recommend that at least once a week to try to sit in a circle of dhikr. These the Prophet ﷺ likened to as the gardens of paradise. He ﷺ said, when you come upon the gardens of paradise, sit, take advantage of them. And when they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what are the gardens of paradise? He said, the circles of dhikr, where believers get together purely for the remembrance, the recitation, the mentioning of Allah Almighty. Ultimately, it is dhikr that sustains us. When we take nourishment from food, we are taking nourishment from the energy that it is producing through its dhikr. Hence, the importance of eating food closest to its natural state. Because that plant or vegetable, that piece of food, is closest to its natural state, closest to its authentic state of dhikr. The more that foods are processed, the more that foods are cooked, their nature becomes compromised, the dhikr becomes diminished, its power becomes less effective. But ultimately, it is dhikr that sustains us. And the more that we engage in dhikr Allah, 
the more that our souls take their nourishment from dhikr, and the less we become dependent upon the world of form, the more we develop the joy, the light, the love of ibadah, the experience of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that becomes more and more what sustains us. Glory be to the divine, to Allah. Subhanallah. Here's a question. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal the Qur'an, the holy book, the book of secrets on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The answer is in the Qur'an. We see that the Qur'an, that title for that book, has different names. And it is mentioned in several verses as a dhikr Al-Qur'an is also a dhikr Al-Qur'an is a reminder in itself. The entire book is a reminder of Allah, of His attributes, of our purpose, and of our inevitable return to His presence. There are so many beautiful verses in the Qur'an where the word dhikr is mentioned. And this would require several episodes to go over each ayah and unravel the secrets and the beauties of what Allah is trying to tell us. But there's this verse in particular in Surah Taha. It is chapter 20, verse 14. In this verse, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the conversation he was having with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. And right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa to abandon his mind, to abandon his self, to abandon his ego before coming to him, right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa alayhi salam to do so, Allah said, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimi salata li dhikri sadaqallahu alazim Allah is telling Musa alayhi salam I am Allah I am Allah I am the Lord I am the creator of everything Allah didn't use any attributes in this verse he used Allah from which he poured into Musa alayhi salam's heart all of his attributes. He's telling Musa alayhi salam, I am Allah, the Lord of everything. There is no God but me. There is no one worthy of worship but me. I am Allah. So worship me. Establish a connection with me. Serve me. Remind yourself of me. SubhanAllah. You know, everything is connected. Dhikr. Everything is connected. Salat acts of worship, and especially dhikr. They all serve the same purpose. They all are tools to get us out of this darkness, to guide us out of this darkness and into the light. Not just us, all of us, every human soul. If anything, this is the most important thing that the human mind needs to remind itself of, is reality, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us encourage ourselves individually and collectively to remember Allah, to remember what matters. And when we do come together in congregations and thicker circles, let us remind ourselves of what it is that we're trying to do. We're not coming together to harmonize, to sing, to chant, even though those are fruits of dhikr. But we have to remind ourselves of the goal, of the purpose of dhikr, is to remind of ourselves of the divine presence that we were all in. It is said that there are many different voices which are categorized into four. And if that voice is giving some kind of inspiration to do something bad, to make a sin, to make a mistake, then by using dhikr, one could identify which voice it is. And when I'm talking about the voices, I'm talking about there's the voice of a shaitan, which is called al-waswasa. There's the voice that's coming from the self. And there's the voice that Allah speaks to the human heart, which is through his angels. It's called al-malla. And then the last one is ilham, is divine inspiration. Somebody's getting an evil thought, a bad thought, something that is negative, something that is 
encouraging the human mind to indulge in something that is far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, using dhikr, one can identify the source of that voice. If one uses dhikr and that voice does not go away, then one can be assured that that voice is coming from itself and not shaitan. Shaitan runs away from dhikrullah. Once the name of Allah is mentioned, shaitan flees. So this is one of the fruits of dhikr. So imagine dhikr coupled with fasting because fasting removes shaitan from the equation so that the human mind can work on itself and identify those bad traits and those diseases that needs to be cleansed from inside the heart. Dhikr can help the human mind achieve higher stations of cleanliness, higher stations of awareness, higher stations of connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us be consistent with dhikr, even if it is for a few minutes every single day. Take a few moments every day, before and or after salat, to remind the human mind of the purpose, to remind the human mind of the essence of all of the attributes of Allah, which are love, compassion, mercy. Let us take a few moments every day to remind ourselves of who we are. So to briefly summarize what we've covered in this episode of Soul of Islam Radio, the goal of Islam, the purpose of Islam is to awaken to God consciousness, to become mutaqeen. The goal of Islam is to reach maqam al ihsan the state of God consciousness or God awareness. And the one practice that the Prophet ﷺ emphasized the most in terms of awakening this heart-based consciousness is dhikrullah. And you'll notice, of course, the salah involves dhikrullah. It is a form of dhikr. The salah is a form of dhikr. But pure dhikr, the recitation, the chanting of Allah's names and attributes of specific phrases such as the kalima tayyibah, la ilaha illallah, and so on, is a powerful way of polishing and really of awakening the heart. Dhikr may be practiced individually as well as collectively, and there are many forms of dhikr, many recitations that are in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that are to this day still observed. For example, after the salah, after the prayers, uh, the jama'ah or the individuals will recite 33 times, subhanAllah, 33 times, alhamdulillah, 33 times, Allahu Akbar, and so on. In essence, dhikr should be practiced as a meditative spiritual practice, as should all practices. It's one thing to go through a practice almost mindlessly, but when we approach and experience these practices mindfully, they become infinitely more effective, infinitely more powerful and beneficial. The goal is to practice everything from dhikr to salah to everything we do, to even movement and speaking and breathing walking in a state of mindfulness, in a state of presence with Allah Almighty. For specific suggestions on how to practice dhikr, you can visit islamicmeditation.com where we go into much more detail. This is Ihsan and I wish you a blessed evening or day, wherever you may be in the world. May the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you, your loved ones, your community, with our entire community and with this world. May we as human beings awaken again to our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to awaken to a life of spirituality, a life based in presence, in awareness, in consciousness, in mindfulness. Salatu salam ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala alihi sahbihi wa salam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our himma to remember Him, strengthen our himma to establish daily connections with Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our himma so that we can inspire others around us to the path, to the way of selflessness, to awareness, to love. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. And this brings us to the end of this episode. Please continue supporting the Soul of Islam radio podcast by subscribing on iTunes and liking us on Facebook. And for more information, and if you feel inspired to support this work, you can make a donation on our website at soulofislamradio.com. And inshallah, we have all learned the importance and the significance of dhikr in this episode. And like Brother Hassan said, if you want to cultivate the awareness through the practice of dhikr, 
if you want to attain higher levels of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this beautiful practice, you can visit islamicmeditation.com. And with that, may the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.